everyone, it's Lisa. Long time no talk to. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a couple of weeks. Actually, it might be two or three weeks now. I hope everybody had a pleasant Thanksgiving in the United States. I'm here to do an unpackaging video and first thoughts um, on some watercolor paints that I bought from Von Kuchen out of Los Angeles. Just open this up really quick. Off camera. I forgot to cut this before. I got on camera. I set up everything else, but I forgot this last piece. Ooh. There's the package. Um, some of you might be familiar in the community or watchers. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things first. On my channel, I'm going to probably rebrand my channel at the beginning of 2021. I'm still trying to land on a good name for my channel. Um, all my content will move over. I've also started doing an affiliate link with Amazon. So if I can link anything uh, that I'm showing you on my Amazon affiliate link, that will be below. Um, in the comments area of the videos from now on going forward. Um, for all of you who are new, thank you for stopping by for the first time. All of you that have been watching my videos, thank you for coming back to see what I've got going on. I'm getting ready for the Christmas season. And um, yeah, just been uh, <laughs> trying not to go too crazy with all the stuff that's kind of going on. So this is a typical um, Bon Kuchen um, packaging. Bon Kuchen is, I would call them a high-end stationery store out of Los Angeles. Um, not everything that they have is high-end, but all their leather products, since they use um, superior labor, if you're looking for anything like that, um, they sell that product as a distributor for them. And those are quite pricey. I haven't leaped off and done superior labor for that very reason. Um, let me just see if I can get my camera at a different angle so you can see the loveliness of this packaging. I love how they, they wrap the packages at um, Bon Kuchen. It's just really, really lovely. Um, so, uh, with that being said, I'll try to keep all the accoutrements of the packaging so I can use them for future use. Um, let's see if I can get this washi tape because this is. There you go. I've got this trod now, which I kind of like. Oops, I'm not going to be able to save it. Cats, but oh well. Not the end of the world. Alright. So with that being said, and since it's already ruined, I will pull these out. Okay, so um, Kiritake, which is the maker of this. Oh, I forgot. I also bought some um, stationary stickers for 2021 to use in my, my planner. So I've got some of these going on for some dates and stuff like that, which is great because it kind of coordinates with some of the colors I've been using. So just the little circle dots to stick on like key important dates for different things. I'm going to use a color coding system for 2021. Um, Kiritake is um, the maker of these Ganzi Tambi colors. I've had, uh, I got a set of these not that long ago, well, actually several years ago, and I gave them away to a friend who wanted to start getting into painting again. Um, they're very rich in color, but this set is in the larger set of like 48 colors, but they put this out as a special edition kind of unique colors and so I'm just going to show you what these are because I've already kind of got them swatched up after looking at them on the Bon Kuchen website. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus in on that without turning it over. Uh, let's see here. Come on autofocus. Okay so the colors that are in here is number 14 Cherry Blossom, number 13 Lilac, uh, number 69 Horizon Blue, Number 60, I'm just hoping that I can get this to come into focus. Why are you being so difficult? Uh, okay, let's turn it on. Maybe that'll help. Um, there we go. Um, I've got number 59, lime green. Number 48, greenish yellow. 
number 11, natural beige, number 12, rose beige, number 71, India red, number 72, maroon, number 21, gray, and number 68, blue, gray, deep, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, these colors are kind of unique. I don't have them um, in any of my watercolor sets. I normally use, um, I, my paints are Daniel Smith, a combination of Daniel Smith. Um, I have, um, why am I having a blank? M. Graham, and I usually use Durant. Um, or the paints that I normally have, but I wanted to swatch these beautiful colors. This is what they look like. Um, and I've got to figure out a palette for these if I'm going to ever travel with these because they're um, kind of uniquely packaged, but they don't come in your traditional palette. So um, a little awkward. I think there's a person on YouTube who makes palettes that I can possibly get her to um, put these out there. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly swatch them. I've already gone ahead and put the colors down because I went and cheated on the Bon Kuchin website to like read off the colors to you and create this. Um, this is Strathmore. I'm sorry, I just got done uh, wiping down my table and I used Old English wa um, wax so it's a little oily. Um, Visual Journal, uh, 140 pound watercolor paper. This is great paper. Um, the visual journals from um, Strathmore are not that expensive. You can pick them up in um, a lot of locations. Um, Michael's for one, Hobby Lobby, I guess would probably sell them. Um, in the metropolitan DC area, we don't have Hobby Lobby, so I don't know about that. But Michael's definitely carries it. Of course, Amazon, which I can put an Amazon affiliate link down below as well. Um, I'm using a, uh, just like a craft Princeton select round number five brush that I got from my local art store to do my swatches. And now I'm going to dive in and open up my rinse jar as well on the side. Hopefully I will not knock over the cam camera this time. Um, kind of straddling my tripod and doing this. This is a really nice, beautiful pink. This would be great for floral. So I'll be using this to decorate um, any kind of floral prints going forward. And even though these are like student grade paints, they're very punchy. Um, I found that um, that the other colors out of the set are pretty vibrant. The lilac, um, of course, it being a traditional kind of pale purple, um, you're probably going to have to do a couple of coats of this to build it up because just of the nature of the color, but it's really pretty. Um, and like I said, this, these colors are great for florals, which I like to do um, garnishing for my journals. And I like to do a lot of uh, flowers and stuff like that. So this is why I really wanted to get this set. Um, and I don't have colors quite like these. Um, and sometimes it's just nice to be able to get colors that you don't have, that you don't have to mix. Um, I'm kind of a lazy painter that way. <laughs> And I haven't really been doing a lot of watercoloring lately. I've been um, working on gouache, actually, and uh, taking up some other hobbies while we're all kind of in this stage of quarantining or lockdown. Um, at least here in our area, we're kind of curfewing and people not doing what they're supposed to do with wearing masks. So hopefully we'll be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccines rolling out. But I hope everybody else is doing really well. Um, oh wow, this lime green is great. It's almost like a, I don't want to say fluorescent, but it kind of reminds me of a fluorescent sap green. Great for grass. Landscapes. Here is the uh, yellowish green. I'm sorry I'm not really rattling these off because I feel like you can probably see the colors with my writing underneath. But this is the yellow green number 48. Yeah. Kirotaki, for it to be student grade, it's actually really good colors. And I actually, if I can figure out a way to put this in a palette uh, and not a cardboard box, 
I will probably try to take these as a travel set because the good thing about them is they're not horribly expensive. The retail price for it on the Bon Kuchin site was $22, which um, is a really reasonable price, I think, for 12 paints. It's roughly $2 for, it looks like, almost a full half pan or a full pan of paint. They're not quite filled up, but these are really large pans. And this is the Rose Beige. This would probably blend with some of your reds to give you like this pink up here really nicely or something slightly lighter if you wanted to tone down. And now I'm going to try to squeeze this over and bring this up a little bit. So now I'm doing the Indian Red. I don't think Kirataki, and I'll look as soon as I'm done, gives you pigment information. It's a very good earthy red color. Okay, and this is now maroon. Okay, this is kind of grainy. Um, the earth red and the maroon. So the reds are kind of, I don't know if you guys can see that really well. I'm going to try to zoom in here. Um, they come off a little more chalky-like um, compared to some of the other colors. So this one definitely laid down and you can see um, it's pigmented, but it's like you're just going to have to layer it. But it looks a little bit on initial when it's laying down on paper, at least this kind of mixed media. It's leaning a little bit more towards cold press. Um, kind of comes off. Oops, let me get you back into the frame. Um, kind of comes down a little bit chalky. And the gray. It's a nice. I consider this more on, on a warmer gray side because it just seems a little bit darker than a cooler gray. Um, but really, really nice color. Um, and this is the last and least blue-gray deep, which I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one lays down, especially as we go into winter months. This one might be good for a winter scene. Yeah, this, this is really pretty. Again, I can see some of that. Um, I'm going to try to like zoom in here. So I don't think it's picking it up on camera, but definitely when you lay this down, if you buy them, you're going to notice um, a little bit of a lighter. You're going to see your paper through it a little bit, so it's a little bit chalky. And I don't think the camera is doing justice for it at all right now, but it's there, and so is the gray. Um, let's see here. You can see a little bit of speculation in there and in the red. So all I would say is if you're going to use those colors, which they're absolutely beautiful colors, I would just lay down um, and do some layers on it just to kind of get the vibrancy to show through. But on camera, it does not look bad. And I think if you're just a crafter or you're utilizing these in any kind of like, let's say, not for sale work, these colors are going to work great in a journal. And that's exactly what I'm going to use them in. Um, I really like them, though. I'm really, I'm really pr pleased with them, even though a couple of them look a little chalky. Um, when they lay down, I still think that the colors are vibrant. I think they're actually really beautiful. You can use them winter into spring quite well. Um, and even in the fall, because of the beige and the um, Indian red, uh, you might want to uh, do some layering and do a color chart, which I'm not going to do here because it would take too much time. But I just wanted to give you some initial thoughts and impressions. Um, I really appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. It helps support the channel. Um, and if you can, I will also see if I can find these on the Amazon site as well as I will link to Bon Kuchen. 
like I said, I have a affiliate link, so it helps me out a little bit, and you get the same pricing that I did. All right, guys, happy holiday season. Um, if I don't talk to you before the new year, have a wonderful one, safe one, and healthy one. Take care. Bye. Bye.